It's time now for another segment of Healthy Thriving Families in Two Homes with Stephanie Dobson. Stephanie is a local lawyer and mediator here in Lloydminster with Hanka Divorce Law and Mediation. And Stephanie, we've talked about a number of different subjects over the past several months in regarding to uh, divorce and separation, but this one is one we haven't touched on yet and it's regarding pets. And this can be a huge issue for some couples going through the process. So let's talk about how that works. Can you actually get custody uh, or shared custody of pets you know with respect to pets although we see them as living beings unfortunately the law treats them differently the law treats them as personal property in a separation and divorce so it is divided similar to how you divide a house or a bank account or even such not menial things like a toaster it's a very difficult way of course to look at a living being who's a loving member of your family but unfortunately that's how the law treats uh, pets in the context of a separation and divorce now if there is a dispute Stephanie and it ends up going to court what does that look like so just like the resolution of any property dispute, the question is going to be who will keep the asset. And in this case, the asset is the pet. And the question is who will be the owner of that pet going forward? So it's not necessarily as much about sharing the pet. It's about determining ownership for a court. Now, how does this ownership get to get determined? There's a number of factors and I'm going to list a few of them here. Of course, it's a non-exhaustive list. Things like uh, who paid for the pet? So can you show a receipt that has uh, your name or your credit card on it? Or can you prove that the pet was a gift to you or to someone? Whose name is at the vet's office? And even who generally takes care of the pet? So there's a lot of factors that you look at if a court were to try to determine who would keep that pet. And if it gets to the point where, you know, you just can't come to an agreement and you don't really want to go uh, through court. Are there other options for dealing with this, Stephanie? Absolutely. You know, there's uh, a lot of times, of course, people are quite offended when they think that or when they realize that their pet will be treated as personal property, as I said, like a toaster. And so people want to resolve things out of court. And in other episodes, we've talked lots about out of court options like collaborative divorce, mediation, the do it yourself option, like sitting at the kitchen table. So if you're wanting to get a divorce professional involved, mediation or collaborative divorce would be the options that I would recommend because it's about generating options that's going to work for both separating spouses as far as um, how to uh, reach resolution. So, um, uh, you know, there are people who uh, will take the isolated issue of a pet dispute if they decide they wanted to use a lawyer for the rest of their divorce, but they want to use a mediator to, to resolve their pet dispute. There are some times where people will refer even just that one issue to me as a mediator. Now, if there are things that are that are happening and, and people aren't going through the divorce and separation process, but uh, still have pets and, you know, things can happen in the future, as we all know, uh, are there uh, issues that they can be dealing with and, and steps they can be taking to deal uh, with their pets and, and some of the things surrounding pets uh, before it gets to a point where there may be a, a dispute of some sort? You know, people uh, often don't plan when they're just even generally forgetting pets for a moment even just generally when they're living together when they get married uh, some people will enter what's called a cohabitation agreement or a prenuptial agreement um, for generally a lot of different things but very often when people purchase a pet they forget um, about adding a pet or the the uh, relationship that they would maintain with that pet post separation or divorce into such an agreement um, if they've even made one so i would recommend that whether divorce separation or divorce is looming or not when you get a pet it's really important to have these kind of conversations so what kinds of things would you want to talk about with respect to uh, your relationship your maintained relationship with that pet going forward so here's some examples um, who would be making the major decisions with respect to the pet post separation or divorce things like uh, you know surgeries health care nutrition even things like discipline or training of the pet um, Will you continue to share the pet or will one of you keep the pet 
after the separation. If you are planning on keeping the pet, would there be a schedule? Even things like vacations, when one person goes on vacations, mm -hmm. would there be an opportunity for the other person to automatically keep the pet, uh, like childcare, pet care, we'll call it. So it does sound very much like parenting related issues, post-separation or divorce. Um, but you know, your pet is a living being, it's a member of your family. And what I hope that we can do is to create that environment where we do treat a pet like that living being, uh, like the children, um, and keep it out of the court context so that we can continue to do so. Well, Stephanie, always interesting speaking with you because there's just a number <laughs> of issues that you just don't think about when it comes to, you know, as you said today, even with pets, even if you're not separating and divorcing. So thank you yeah. once again for bringing these issues to us and for speaking with us today. And we'll be back again to chat next week. Thanks, Stacey.